Welcome back, everybody, to another episode and session of Recruitment Uncensored with me, Kate. And I have an amazing guest on with me today, James Whitelock of Thinking Circles. Hi, James. Hey, how are you doing? Good. I'm doing good. Any of you at the expo might be thinking, how the hell are James and Kate doing a LinkedIn Live when I've seen them at the expo today? Well, the answer to that is this is a pre-record. So if you're watching, still put your comments in and your questions. It's just we won't be addressing them live because this isn't live. Even though we've recorded it as if it is alive, it's not edited. Uh, we're not here to answer the questions in the moment. But if you put them in, make sure that you connect with James um, and tag him in the comments. We will come back to you on your questions. Um, so, yeah, still get involved and still chuck those in there. Um, but today we're covering off a subject that I'm really excited to talk about because I don't know enough about marketing. I think there's so much to know about it. So I know I'm going to learn a lot from James today. But we are talking about um, fuck marketing funnels. Do you want to show your uh, jumper, James, sure. for everybody watching? I love this. <laughs> I might do. I might get a jumper like that and maybe, I don't know, what could I put on the back? <laughs> um i can't think now but yeah i need to get something like that for mine it's an attention grabber that one i like it yeah yeah you gotta gotta, gotta make a difference right you gotta kind of get in people's faces yeah. that's what it is yeah gotta stand out exactly so exactly. we're going to be talking about today or james is going to be talking to us today i'm going to be throwing some questions to him about why traditional market marketing strategies no longer fit so you know there's a lot of you watching that will be doing your own marketing so this is going to be giving a lot of value for you to go and apply straight away so let's get started with the first question so i wanted to ask you first of all um is this linear customer journey a myth when it comes to marketing um well there's a there's a short one or a long, long answer and i'll give you both right so the short answer is is yes right so traditionally when people talk about marketing and when they talk kind of about sales as well, it is this linear process. Okay. So you go from kind of awareness all the way through to purchase and usually, and usually forget about kind of post purchase as well, right? And that works exactly the same within recruitment from people being aware of your business all the way through to giving you that kind of role that you need to, that you want to, that they want you to fulfill and then through to kind of looking after them. But it is this linear process, you know, the traditional funnel, obviously, you know, the people come in at the top, you know, it's very wide at the top and gets narrower and narrower as it gets down towards the kind of bottom. Um, but there's a kind of, there's a, there's some fundamental problems with how that works in the digital age. Okay. Yeah. And also there are some kind of problems with people who either don't have a lot of kind of time for marketing or are very kind of aware over how much resource they want to put into their marketing. And they tend to, embargo stuff for certain points along this this linear journey so you only use some kind of content for awareness or you only use some kind of content for for for, for consideration or you only use some kind of content and the problem with that you know is you may well have spent a lot of time a lot of money a lot of resources on creating all of this great content that is really really valuable but only some people will only will only ever see it, and they may only ever see it once because they're kind of they're only at certain points that they fall when they're falling into the funnel, get to see. I don't know. Let's say for instance, traditional kind of marketing funnels say that you need to put you need, a case study comes in near the bottom of the funnel, right? Case studies are particularly laborious and take a long time. Need a sign off from the client and all this kind of stuff. So it's really chunky piece of content. But you are only letting certain people actually see it, whereas actually. Yeah you probably need to be thinking about that from another from another perspective right and thinking well that's i've spent all this time on this so why should i be embargoing it why wouldn't someone who you who you you know you know traditionally think as being not really aware of your business why wouldn't they want to see that really good bit of content as opposed to some slightly more kind of fluffy bit of social content that you put that, that kind of traditionally you would do at the awareness stage so I think that's where we're kind of where we're kind of coming from is that that's where this this whole myth is coming from is that this linear process this embargoing of this kind of content just is no longer really fit for this digital age what we might consider as this kind of omni channel kind of uh, uh, process that we now live in so this is obviously going live on LinkedIn but people will see some of this content eventually on TikTok on YouTube 
etc 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 so you've got all of these channels at your disposal and people consume content and can and consume uh and the awareness of you in different different ways on these different on these different channels yeah so why not make the most of it right and kind of just think about it more as a round and circular process that once someone's into this process they just kind of keep on spinning around right they're always getting the content all wood stuff and you kind of let them have empower them to make a decision of what they want to see as opposed to you having that kind of um control over it and i know we'll kind of maybe talk about that kind of a little bit more as we move on yeah i kind of get what you're saying there because i know like i i've um since august last year we were talking about before we went live weren't we i do all my own marketing and i think i use like facebook instagram um youtube and obviously linkedin and i think i was keeping i was too much keeping some content oh i'm going to keep that for this and keep that for this and actually what i've learned is it's repurposing it but for the target market and maybe packaging it differently or doing a different clip from that live or using a different caption for that picture do you know what and i that's what i i think i was guilty of doing that at the start was keeping back some stuff that actually everyone needs to see this it's just a different audience potentially that's going to see it in a different way and and let them decide as well right you know you this is we live in this you know people are empowered online to kind of to interact with you at different different in in on their terms so and you can't always control that you know there is there's this the stats around how many touch points a, a person might have with your business before they make a decision right something like some 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 stats it say seven might be kind of as mo- maybe more than that either way they've got choice over how they want to be interacting with your business so it seems silly that you are not going to kind of make the most of some really good content that you spent time money and resource kind of creating just to kind of have that have that wait until someone sends you a message all right or does that first kind of bit of interaction with you and then you go oh yeah we've got this great case study or you kind of you know you wait till you've had that no 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 you get that stuff out there now because case studies are like get that out there yeah exactly right that's going to be one of the main things that people and also i think people just consume slightly differently now right it it doesn't work in that linear fashion it's not it's that that's very analog where what we're talking now is is you know into the digital so just let people kind of make give them the options on how they want to uh, interact with you it's also easier from a marketing standpoint right you don't have to worry too much you can do all the great content that you want to do and put it all out there across multiple channels all at the same time and just let people just consume it and then find their way to you basically yeah yeah no it's such an easier way to do it as well because you're making your job easier because you're putting out instead of having to do all these separate different posts and things on all these multiple platforms you can kind of just it it saves it's more effective in terms of time management i guess as well isn't it yeah especially for you know business to a one man two man a few kind of ones businesses who don't have that kind of maybe that uh those processes in place all that marketing kind of resource in place, you know, just get stuff out there, right? Again, for smaller businesses, what you tend to find is it's sporadic, right? And you mentioned mm-hmm. this is something that you 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 kind of you kind of dealt with and had to deal with. Is what can happen is if you're a smaller business, you have these kind of fits where you are not as busy as you probably want to be, and you go right, I'm going to do some marketing, I'm going to do some stuff on social. You chuckle, you chuck load of stuff out there, and then it kind of stops, and then you kind of then get busy again. And then, but what you want to do is that kind of consistency. And so what you can be, you can be really kind of like uh, smarter with the stuff that you've kind of got. Like, you know, for instance, this webinar that we're doing today is going to be clipped up. It'll be used in different kind of ways, right? It's going to be sliced up. It's going to be this, that, and the other. We'll use it, you'll use it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So making the most of the stuff you've kind of got and you're spending time on is one of the ways to kind of keep it going. But again, don't think of it in a linear process. Just keep getting that stuff out there. And also, if, again, yeah. another tip for a smaller business is don't be worried about repurposing and reusing the same stuff over and over again. That makes, you know, you know, tradition, again, someone might say, oh, your LinkedIn is not going to kind of give you as much credence in the algorithm. Yeah, probably. But for the people who are following you and want to engage you, it doesn't really matter if they're going to see it a couple of times. It just kind of reinforces your message uh, over and over and again. And you can do yeah. some kind of stuff by just like, instead of releasing it on a Wednesday, you might release it on a Sunday, da, 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 those kind of stuff. So different people see it at different times. So yeah, kind of, you know. I think that's a good point for um, any consultants watching that work for a small agency where you haven't got a marketing person is what you said there about the consistency. Um, and it's okay to repurpose and all these things. You know, it's, 
not just doing the marketing when your jobs are drying up or you're low on the candidates. It's keeping up that consistency. Mm -hmm. um, my next question then, so are you missing out on mid-funnel interactions? Now, before you go into the question, um, would you mind explaining what you mean by mid-funnel interactions? So I'm thinking there might be some people watching that might not understand so much what we mean about that before we sure. start talking about it. Sure. So kind of, uh, as, as I mentioned, so traditionally, when you think about uh, kind of a marketing funnel or a sales funnel, there's, um, you know, there's a awareness at the top, there's kind of consideration somewhere in the middle, and then there's kind of purchase at the bottom. And in some more sophisticated tunnel funnels, there may be like a post kind of uh, purchase uh, layer as well right at the bottom. So mid funnel is that kind of consideration kind of phase when someone is aware of you, may have had a, one, an, an interaction with you, and then they're now considering what they're going to, if they're going to purchase from you or if they're not going to purchase from you. That's what we mean by kind of um, mid funnel. Um, and what we kind of talk about on this kind of mid funnel interactions is again it kind of comes back to this kind of linear process because what mm -hmm. you, what you do in, in that kind of in the in the funnel mentality is you're constantly trying to push people down the funnel yeah so what you can do is you can start to forget and uh, and misalign with people at different points along the funnel because your kind of continual focus is right again it's, especially if you're a recruiter or you're in sales is to kind of move someone from top of the funnel down to purchase so that's the way you think you think right pushing them down further 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 down and what can happen in this day and age is if you're still thinking in that in that in that, that way someone might move back up potentially right because for whatever reasons you've had you'll have this we'll all have had this someone's gone they're thinking about it but i don't know the the it's had some bad economic news or something happened in the business and then they kind of shift back they shift uh, up upper yeah. stage or something like that and what kind of tends to happen is you then kind of forget about them or you haven't kind of realized that they've moved into that spot into the further up the further kind of back up the funnel and so your engagement but your engagement stays the same so it doesn't kind of like it hasn't adjusted itself so this whole kind of more circular approach it doesn't really matter right at that point because they're still going to be getting the good content and again it comes back to the whole thing of embargoing stuff until that people get to certain points so if someone is moving someone as they move down you're thinking right at awareness, they get this kind of fluffy social media stuff. At, at consideration, they're going to get case studies. That just before purchase, they may get something else, right? Some other kind of, I don't know, salary server or something like that to kind of confirm that we're the right people. We know the kind of the, their industry, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but when you kind of think about it kind of circular, it doesn't really matter at that point because you, what you can do, you're just still kind of feeding them all this stuff. And then they're always almost continually kept in consideration. Right, because they're always in that in that in that phase, because they're just kind of swirling around this kind of circle of content that they're constantly interacting with, and you kind of don't ever miss out on that interaction because they're kind of they're deciding it. Whereas if you think kind of more linearly, when if they move up or down, usually if they move back up, you might kind of miss out on kind of on that on that kind of interaction mm. and start kind of serving them. You might the kind not of, prioritize them exactly, and you might miss them. They might get forgotten. And things like that, and that is one of the things that tends to happen with with kind of funnel interactions, is um, you get kind of you just get so obsessed with getting moving people down to purchase. Purchase is the goal, whereas it's more circular. It, engagement is the goal, right? That's the kind of that's the thing. And so you kind of you know it, with these kind of mid funnel interactions, is that there's there's that, that doesn't really come into a consideration when you think about it in a much more kind of circular fashion. Yeah, I think I've definitely been guilty of that before because it happens to me a lot where you'll get the awareness and then you'll get to consideration. And then, like you say, things happen. Sometimes people have to change their plans for training or they aren't recruiting as many people as they thought. So don't need a trainer to come in, whatever it is. And they go back. It's not that they've forgotten about you. It's just they've gone out of the, you know, that mm -hmm. linear process. And then I think I, I've been guilty myself of thinking, OK, well, there's maybe other people I need to prioritise for the moment. And, and actually, there's still a major priority. It's just that things have changed and I need to keep them in that circular mm -hmm. uh, motion as such and keep that engagement up. You know, it's nothing changes. You know, they're still they're still a worthwhile person. It's just, yeah, it's very easy sometimes, isn't it, to miss the midway and, and to see it, also it's not even if it's a no for that moment, it's not a no forever. Exactly. And I think what we can be guilty of is that like, oh, it's a no, move on to the next thing, right? Or move yeah. on to the next one. And I think especially when you're in sales, um, it is, you know, it is around getting people to that, to that purchase. So if someone decides that they're not right, ready right now, 
you know, it's very easy then to just go, okay, we don't, we won't worry about them for a minute. We'll just we'll move on to the next next person who's further down the further down the funnel and push them kind of further down. Whereas if you think of this kind of more circular motion, um, you know, that is they're constantly kept being kept up date. And again, when they're ready, they will come back to you. But they're not being kind of um, underserved, basically. Yeah. No. No. It's. Um... It, I've definitely it's making me think already like about some of the people that maybe I'm not I'm letting slip a little bit that I need to um to go back to well not you know just make sure that I don't lose essentially from well, that, that circle an example of that an example of that is 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 kind of email marketing right is you send you know you you segment your database to say right I'm going to send this email out to these the people at this stage or I'm going to send this email out to people at that stage or send this email out to that that stage Whereas actually, it's a much easier process, especially if you're a smaller business, to not think about it like that and to just be kind of like, right, we're going to just kind of send out, you know, it might be an email around a kind of a, a brand new case study. That's not just going out to the people at consideration. That's going out to everybody who's on the on the database. Yeah, I send mine. Right. My email marketing goes to everybody gets the same email. Yeah. Purely for time. Well, and ease of use as well, right? Yeah. yeah. I think you can. I think people can overthink this. That's the other thing, and and, and that this this kind of funnel mentality and the linear mentality can can push you towards overthinking uh your marketing strategy basically um so yeah and you know what this isn't anything necessarily new the way of thinking about this in circular circular motion you know this um hubspot came up with the, um, the the idea of the flywheel so the flywheel does exactly the kind of same thing at thinking circles obviously because we, we we call it a circle because that's the name of the business and so we kind of leaned on it but it does it means it's it's just way more easy it's way more interesting for for people with it once they kind of starting to engage your business um and from a marketing perspective it is a much easier kind of uh process to, to follow yeah no definitely so that brings me on to my next question then so um does your funnel prioritize engagement over control yeah okay so this kind of um this is the kind of the the final piece of the, the puzzle right so you know a funnel is all about control Okay, the funnel is about controlling where someone is at, that, at any one point along the funnel, and you kind of deciding when you want them to move. Right? You know, you're right there. Your decision is right, okay. This person has those interactions now. Now they're at that stage. Okay, they've had these interactions. Now they're at that stage, and you're controlling it. Whereas in this day and age, again, when we talked about things like kind of omni-channel marketing and being kind of present omni-channel, it's around engagement. Right? Who is engaging with your kind of with with your stuff? Right? Uh, and anything that's kind of mentioning you, that's what is more important in this day and age, right? Is that in kind of a level of engagement? But who are the people who are, who are the eyeballs of seeing all of this stuff? Who's the people that are, mm. and, and again, you don't want to get, again, if you're a small business and you're not able to measure your marketing, particularly kind of as effectively as you might want to, you probably do have to rely on what we call vanity metrics, likes, shares, views, those kinds of stuff, as opposed to kind of getting people, kind of getting bums on seats, et cetera. But those do have a place if that's all you're going to make. So those are the kind of things that you kind of want to do because you're trying to build up this, you know, build up this awareness. And, you know, when when businesses come to us, they, they, they kind of fall into two camps. They either want people to know about them or they don't believe in awareness and they want lots, just lots of bums on seats, basically. But you need to, you can do both at the same time, right? By building out a, a kind of an awareness of your business and what your business stands for, the messaging from your business, who the kind of people you want to talk to, giving them relevant content consistently on brand will push people to becoming clients. No, no two ways about it. It works, right? The reason why you're doing these 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 webinars is you know that the, the people you want to talk to and the people you want on as guests is going to be relevant to your end clients, you know, yeah. those recruitment businesses, and it adds value to them. And that is really kind of important. So that's where you want to kind of get to, right, is, is building out this kind of, you know, so when someone thinks of of you and your business, they think, oh, we've seen a couple of those webinars, you've some great guests on there. And you know what, Kate is someone we want to kind of talk to because we she understands our space, she understands our market, she understands, she's able to come into, she's got some great kind of case studies that we've already read, you know, uh, she's got all this content on online, and she seems to be kind of, you know, she's just present. Boom, right, you're there. Because this day and age, with this kind of, in this digital market, with this kind of digital landscape, people can do way more research than they've ever done before. And this is where these whole yeah. kind of touch points come in, right? And people do do that, right? They're going to be Googling you. They're going to be looking at your kind of uh, LinkedIn profile personally. They're going to look at your branded pages. They're going to do all this kind of stuff. So they're going to have these interactions with you and all these engagements and that's what's going to make those decisions, not necessarily some arbitrary 
kind of feeling or, or score that you've given them to push them down. Those are the things that will con- convert. Now, you can measure all that and you can lead score all that kind of stuff and you can send people certain, people certain things at certain times. But what you're doing is you're not you're 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 not prioritizing that as control and you're not necessarily trying to get them to do a certain thing because what this does within kind of marketing anyway is it's going to happen right these people will happen my business runs exactly like this businesses that we work with run exactly like this once you build up this kind of head of steam and that is around again adding value adding relevance being consistent and brand and when i say brand i mean you know people understand what you stand for what is the message yeah. coming out for your, for your business who you are exactly once all of that is in place, you just keep just just talking about that kind of stuff and adding all of that stuff. And that doesn't matter if it's webinars, if it's case studies, if it's testimonials, if it's articles on the website, if it's podcasts, you just build up this kind of like sphere of influence around you, mm-hmm. right? This this you're, you're this kind of galaxy of things that are being drawn into you kind of gravitationally and just happens, right? You don't need to worry about arbitrary funnels and, and that kind of thing. That's why I think it's really important to be authentic as well, because it's you're making your life so much harder. If you're trying to build a brand based on a persona that isn't really you, A, that's more having to have more thought and more work put into it. But I just think like if you're it it it, it comes across so much better if you're just being vulnerable and authentic and just being yourself. And then that like you know that that's all I've tried to do really with anything that I do is it's easy it makes my life easier I haven't got to pretend to be anything that I'm not Mm -hmm. but I think people now in this digital world like you said there's so many people they can compare you with or other people that are on LinkedIn all the platforms um and authenticity is where they're going to buy into you um and really get a feel for what you stand for when they're comparing um and they can you know like you said they're going to do their research Mm -hmm. you know they're going to look at where you are, what you're at, who you are, what you're doing. And that will change over time. You know, and again, I found this as, as my business has grown, I am very conscious that uh, I, as the figurehead and MD of the, of the business, that there are points where I need to kind of step back and let either m- members of the team have more prominence, let the brand have more prominence. It's easier when you're a kind of a smaller business and you're one, one member. But from, from your perspective, when if you if you get to a point where there's five or six of you in your business, right? You know, hopefully in the next few years, you're, you're that kind of that's you're that successful, right? You're going to have this kind of like uh, existential kind of crisis, like what's more important, me or the brand or anyone else in the brand? And you have these kind of things. So it's great. You know, the, everything you mentioned is, is is perfectly kind of is is workable when it when you're one person because you can continue to be authentic and transparent when the business gets bigger. And I, I'm sure there are businesses who are a bit bigger and they're thinking, I don't really want all my recruiters doing this online because da, 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 that kind of thing. Well, it yeah, does get more it. complicated. Yeah. It gets more complicated yeah. at, at that point, right? Yeah. Um, but all all challenges as opposed to all issues, right? They're just challenges that can be overcome. Yeah. 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 No, I've I'm I'm getting a lot. I'm it's, my cogs are turning in my mind as we're talking about this about, oh, I could post about this and I could do that. So yeah, no, it's um I'm 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 learning a lot from this as well. Before I come to your top tip, which yeah. again is going to be an interesting one for everyone watching, I'm just going to do a roundup of um, the next episode. So um, the next date, I always have to look at this because I forget. Third of April, um, normal time, going live at half past twelve. We're doing another kind of marketing focus one. So I've got Robert Garner on with me. Um, and we are going to be talking about, and I'm really looking forward to this as well, because I'm trying to sort my website out at the moment, um, mm-hmm. is how to use website integrations to increase sales in your agency. Um, and, you know, I'm, I've am i talked about this before on this show. I'm not tech illiterate, but I'm not a tech savvy mad person. So when it comes to integrations, I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you two or three probably. So this is going to be really interesting for me, but also for any of you watching. So keep an eye out for that event going live. And that will be the 3rd of April. And that's going to be a good one. So definitely come and watch. Um, but I'm going to come back to you for a top tip. Um, and we're going to be quite direct with this one. Customers do not follow a linear journey. No, Talk to me don't. about this top tip. They don't. All right. So customers aren't, I, I know, you know, it's, it's omni-channel, it's across multiple platforms. There's this whole kind of this, this linear embargo journey it just doesn't happen anymore. People do their research, customers do their research. They come, they go, they dip in, they dip out. 
Um, you don't really have as much control over them as you used to. So don't think that don't kind of fool yourself into kind of into that trap where you're trying to kind of like force customers into an arbitrary kind of funnel that doesn't know that no longer exists, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost too black and white, isn't it? For what yeah. we too binary. It's way too binary. Yeah. yeah, it's way too binary yeah. for, the, for for the digital age. Um, and uh, it just, just doesn't work. It's not fit for purpose anymore. Yeah. And actually, I've got a, qu a question for you around this, which might feed into some of the stuff we've spoken about. But I always think, I've always been told anyway, or think um, that, you know, there needs to be a mix. So we need to have some content that's value, some content that's promotional, maybe some, depends on the business, the size of the agency, but maybe some more personal insights into the, the business, who we are, all of that stuff, maybe some industry news. Does that really, when we're thinking about this customer journey and it is more circular, does that really have a big impact on how you vary the content? Or is it more about, like you say, just don't think about it too much, consistency? Is that more important? Um, it's, it's all of them, right? It kind of depends on what you want to get across and what you stand for as a business and what you want your brand to be. Um, as, as an example, at Thinking Circles, we have kind of three categories of content. So it's kind of services is what we do. Then there's yeah. what we say content is what we say, and that's our voice. Um, and then there's kind of promotion, what we call, call, and that's what are we doing, right? So that's the promotion is we're going to be at the expo, or James is going to be on this webinar. Content is like our research papers that we put out there, or and our podcast probably kind of falls into that as well. Then we have the services, what okay. we do, which is like here are some new services we're releasing. Do you know that we do this? Have you do you not realize that we can also help you with this kind of stuff? So we break it down into that and we just try and kind of just split it across those. Now you'd expect that from a marketing company to have that kind of, but play into your play into your strengths, right? Um, there's this whole thing around kind of doing one thing and doing doing one thing well. So if you're a smaller business, you don't have the time and resources, pick something that you kind of enjoy doing. And that if that is, if you're not, if you if you're like me, you've got a face of radio. You know, stick to podcasts, right? If you're a good, if you're a good copywriter, stick to the copywriting because it's a really great, it's a, it's a brilliant way. People do read stuff, and if you want, if the kind of people you want to kind of talk to are, you know, you know they're going to read your articles, then full go full force into that, right? And you can use mm. that as your medium. So I guess sometimes it kind of it depends on what, where your strengths are, what you think are the best mediums you're going to be able to kind of interact with, and also yeah. what you feel feel comfortable with, you know. Um, you know, like this. Some people don't feel kind of sit comfortable sitting here talking for half an hour on these something. Don't don't worry about it. Just you know, if you play to your strengths, that's, that's something you're more comfortable with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, I think um, you you can probably overthink a lot of things to do with this, can't you? But yeah. I think um, for me, like I, you know, video. I, I so what I see a lot of agencies do is um you know they're posting a lot about like oh look at this amazing job i've got or jobs we've got yeah. um or um you know a lot of service posts like this is this service we do and actually i think um sometimes people just like to see more other stuff like more well-rounded and giving giving value as well you know essentially this is what this is isn't it we're giving yeah. adding value, value. adding, adding value it. is like is like the term of the of this century right you know what i mean it's kind of yeah is, is what you can add to to your customers because you know they're if they're going to buy from you or they're not going to buy from you right and it is what else you can kind of give them to encourage them to to to, to buy from you um what's the added what where's the added value in all of that right um, yeah. you know, in recruitment, you know, you, you, your service is going to be the same as like a thousand other recruitment agencies out there. So talking around your services is kind of a, a moot point, unless you're doing something really particularly unique or something like that. I don't know what, you know, but your service is pretty similar. So what's, what makes the difference? Why should someone choose you over something? A lot of the time it's the people within your business. It's the personalities within your business. Again, recruitment still is, is a, is a person to person business. At some point, a person still needs to be involved in that interaction. No matter how much AI and automation you've got involved, someone yes. still needs to be involved. It's a person to person. <laughs> so it's those people within your business. I know this almost on, I, I get this on, you know, the amount of people who come to think in circles and want to work with me directly is probably most of the, most, most of our clients. And I can't, I just physically can't. Hence I've got people who are better at doing their job than I've ever have been. Right. So they're they're way better marketeers. So that's that's why that's how we do it. But it is about trying to kind of that that kind of giving that little dip into your into your business, adding value, 
from a service point of view, you don't need to talk about it a huge amount because people kind of know that you're recruitment, right? Yeah. No, that makes total sense. That half hour has gone up. That has absolutely flown by. I've I've got even more questions in my head. So people watching, you probably will do. Now, if you are at the expo, James is going to be easy to spot, as you can see from the back of his jumper. So yeah. grab him. You know, if, if you, you might have watched this on, your, on a break at the expo, we're both going to be around. But what I will encourage you to do is, like I said at the start, um, James is our speaker on this event. So connect with him if you're not connected already. Questions, go to him. He is a fountain of knowledge, as you know, from watching this. You can either contact him directly or put the comments in here. Or if you're at the expo, I would encourage you to grab him for a chat 100%. Um, I sound like Love Island. <laughs> chat. Um, but thank you, everybody, to, for watching. Um, the next episode, as I said, will be on the 3rd of April. You can watch this back. It's going to go straight onto YouTube. So if you want to go back and listen to any of the tips that James has given, go onto YouTube and it's there for you to stream as much as you want. But thank you very much, everybody, for watching. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. See you.